In this video, we'll be talking about ETFs or exchange traded funds. These have become very popular in recent times because they allow for passive investing. And if you're not familiar with what an ETF is, it's essentially a security that will take an investor's money and spread it out amongst multiple different businesses based upon the objective of that ETF. So you might have an ETF that will specifically track the S&P 500 index. So if you put the stock charts for these two securities side by side, you can see that their performance is identical. If you haven't heard of the S&P 500, it's essentially a broad stock market index that holds the top 500 companies in the US market. Businesses like Facebook, Amazon, Google. When it comes to ETFs, there's lots of different options. There's ones that will track a specific sector in the market, like healthcare or technology. Ones that will track the overall market of a specific country, like the S&P 500 for America, NZ Top 50 for New Zealand, ASX 200 for Australia. And then ones that will track a specific commodity or currency. At the end of the day, the main goal when you buy into an ETF is passive investing. Just participating in the market, having a broad diversified portfolio spread out amongst multiple businesses. Not having to worry about picking the right individual company to put your money into and having to perfectly time your buying and selling points. Adopting this style of investing is great for anyone who's not feeling confident in selecting an individual business as this man is at identifying a flavor of ice cream. Mm, that's a 10. One of the most popular and well-recognized ETFs that is largely advocated by some of the biggest investors like Warren Buffett is an ETF that will track the S&P 500. But if you don't want to just invest in the American market, there's also IOO 100, which tracks the top 100 companies in the world. And with this, you'll get a lot of businesses that are in America, but you will also get some that are in China and other parts of the world. So there's not really any way that you can go wrong, but I would say it's recommended to either buy into the IOO for the top 100 companies or the S&P 500 for the top 500 American businesses. The main providers of ETFs are Vanguard and iShares. They have a substantial amount of ETF products available for investors. Essentially, to answer the question of what is the best ETF, it's one that gives you broad stock market diversification among strong, well-rounded companies that will have a nice, consistent growth into the future and putting your money into something like s p 500 or the ioo 100 is a great way to make sure that you will achieve your passive investing goal that is really what you're after with an etf now in newer times there's more exotic etfs like arc innovation that is made up of primarily new and innovative businesses like square tesla roku and these are deemed to have a very high potential for growth but it's important to keep in mind that this kind of fund is actively managed as opposed to an S&P 500 index where the businesses are purely included based upon their ranking. There's no one actively managing the ETF saying buy this company, sell that company. It's just based on the business's performance. So something like an actively managed ETF somewhat goes against the grain of what you're after with ETF investing, which is just passive investing participation in the market. So keep it in mind when you're looking at these newer ETFs and just make yourself familiar with the companies that make up that ETF. So if you wanted to invest in ARK Innovation, you should really look at and understand the businesses that make up the ETF, understand Roku, Square, Tesla, their business model, their long-term goal, the potential growth for that company just to keep yourself educated and understand what those companies that you're putting your money into actually are worth and if they are financially viable to hold on to long term because these businesses will ultimately mold the return you have and how good your portfolio does and ultimately the amount of money that you can make from your investment. These new ETFs can be very enticing with a substantially faster growth in comparison to that found from a traditional index like the S&P 500. If you look at ARK Innovation when it first became publicly traded in 2014, the growth that it's had in comparison to the S&P 500 from that same time point in 2014, you can see 
that ARC has grown at a much, much faster rate, sitting at over 400% with the S&P 500 sitting at only 90%. Based upon the growth of this ETF, you can see that ARC Innovation has grown at a much, much faster rate in comparison to the S&P 500. Just to show you how effective this investing strategy can be, I'll bring up a compound interest calculator to show you the amount of return that you can get. If you start off with an investment of $1,000 and every month add $500 to your investment portfolio for a period of 10 years with an interest rate, a conservative one at that of 8%, your portfolio will be worth $89,000. You'll have contributed $61,000 and the rest, the other $28,000, will be profit. If you times this by two and instead of 10 years put 20 years with everything else being the same, you'll get $280,000. This is over triple the amount and only double the time. So it's a very, very effective strategy. If you add $200 more a month for 20 years, you will get $389,000. So you can see how much this can scale based upon how consistent and the amount that you put in. That wraps that up for the video. As always, if you learned something new, make sure to like and subscribe. Hopefully, you're feeling more confident in selecting which ETF is the best for your investing goal. If you want to learn more about finance and investing, make sure to check out some of the other videos on the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.